All right, good evening, everybody. So tonight, we're gonna get back at our portable power station build. Uh, last time, let's see, where were we? We got the holes cut in the sides for the fans. We got the fans mounted. We got the grills over the fans. And we also, boy, we seem to fart around quite a bit with adhesives. <laughs> <laughs> trying to get that stupid temperature controller mounted to the lid. Ultimately, we ended up going from hot glue to Gorilla Glue to JB Weld. <laughs> and so far, the JB Weld's been working great. This build, unfortunately, is just not going as fast as I want it to, but I guess that's the nature of the beast. You look at everything and you're like, oh, that's not going to take too long. And then you start getting into it and you start realizing how many hours are going into just trying to figure out where pieces are going to go and, and how everything's going to fit together. So let's jump back in and see how far we can get tonight. JB Weld has held up very well. It is very tight and snug in there. Uh, it's dried clear as opposed to that nasty yellowish from the, what was that stuff? Gorilla Glue. So we've got this PCB mounted for the thermostat control. We've got the other thermos, the other fan mounted on the other side. So both fans Still need to test to figure out exactly which way the airflow goes. I believe the exhaust for this inverter right here uh, comes out by the battery terminals, so I need to test that. But I got one of these mounted in. I was able to use a hole saw and it was snug, but it, it fit in just, just fine. It's going to be fun figuring out just spaces and everything and cabling and, and all that fun stuff with everything that's getting put in here but we'll get the other the other hole mounted the really the surface stuff will be done the rest of it's is cable management and figuring out exactly how we want things to go now i have room i haven't put any in but i have room to put another block beneath on each side that can contain just USB, it could be just DC power outlets. Whereas these are all be tied to the AC side. But yeah, I can put DCs down here. I just don't have them. I could also look at potentially wrapping them around the sides or something, even putting them beneath the fans. But I don't have a use case in mind for just the DC options right now, so I didn't I didn't pick any up. But I know somebody's going to say something about not having a you know the cigarette lighter or not having just straight DC ports. It's going to be inefficient pulling AC from these USBs and all that kind of stuff. I know. I I left room and I've got the option to add more if I need to. So let's get this last one drilled out and last one put in. The smell of burning plastic. Clean up all the excess around the outside. The nice thing is that grommet outlet piece that I'm going to be putting in here has a nice little overhang so it'll cover any of these little burrs that get left as long as it's flat. Got this collar that threads on the outside here, but these ribs, this is a very snug fit, so these ribs get caught while I try to cram this thing in here. I should see if I could actually just spin it and thread it in. It's making it go in a whole lot easier. 
because it's exactly the right size that's needed. Oh yeah, so much easier. It's a hair higher than, than this side. Just a hair. It's all right, nobody will know. mounted to the front. I'll find out after I use this a little bit if I want to keep it in this orientation with the two outlets stacked on top or if I want to turn it sideways because if I have to put a power a wall ward or a power brick or something up here it might get in the way a little bit with the handle but we'll, we'll play that by ear and see how it goes. But so far I'm pleasantly surprised and happy with how things are going. But we've done the easy part now. We've got the fixed objects in here that have to go in these rough locations with the fans and then the power, the, the AC power. Now we have to deal with cable management, which is not gonna be easy. I will probably start with two gauge wire just for the time being, so that I could figure out proper routing and everything. And once I get the two gauge figured out, then I will switch up to two aught. Because I think I have some extras. But for now, I'm not using the two gauge for really anything. So it gives me a lot of testing ability of length and bends and that kind of stuff. I guess the last couple things that I need to put in here is the display that goes here in the front. And then I need to decide if I want to put in the power switch to turn the inverter on and off uh, on the front here somewhere. And it's a push button style. I'd like to find a different spot or not have to put it on the front just because I like the, the dark look. You know, you got the, the black outlets here, the black USB and everything in the front. The display will be a dark gray and then the container is a dark gray grayish black but then this push button for the inverter is white and silver so for the time being I might not mount that I might just pop the lid and press the button on the inverter itself my OCD is going to get the best of me when it comes to that because this is the button for that inverter the remote button and having this just contrast is I think might drive me nuts so I don't know maybe I'll try and paint the outside edge black the silver might be okay but the white the white won't I won't like the white look so yeah that just that doesn't look good to me but we'll see so I needed to figure out the fans and figure out which direction the air actually is blown out. Common sense would dictate to me that air would go out the back, but as we all know, common sense does not rule direction. Case in point, obviously hot air is heavier and it sinks. That's why it comes out the bottom. So what I ended up doing was I rigged my old 200 amp battery, hooked it up to the inverter, and I believe this inverter is designed that as soon as a load exceeds 800 watts, the fans should kick on in this inverter. Well, the vacuum cleaner should do that. So let's find out what happens. It helps if you turn the vacuum on. Imagine that. All right. You see, we jumped up to 800 watts. 
We don't feel any air blowing out the front. So we come over to the back and perfect. Air ex is exhausting out the back. Let's see if I can make this a little brighter. There we go. Air is exhausting out the back, exactly how I wanted it to, which is gonna help with our fans here because air will come in this direction and you can see the little arrows right there. Air is gonna come in from this side, go through the front of the inverter and get exhausted out this side. And for a sanity check, the arrow is pointing that way. So perfect. So we should have good airflow in this when that's running. So now I can finalize all my cabling for this and make it look all pretty and wrap it along the back here. So I need to lengthen these wires here so that they'll reach all the way up to where this meter's getting mounted. And they just barely meet in the middle. And so what I want to do is actually lengthen both sets of wires so that they go straight up to where this meter is actually getting mounted. That way, in the event that I need to replace either fan, all I need to do is disconnect one fan as opposed to, you know, wiring and soldering all these wires together down here. Then I got to tear it all out if I have to replace one fan. One thing that a computer guy has a ton of around his house is cat cable. So I tore apart a bundle of, of cat 5, 6, I think it's 6E into the individual twisted pairs. And I'm going to have one twisted pair be one fan, one for the other fan. I'll put heat shrink and tubing on it, extend the line up, and then I'll tin the ends just before they go into this thermostat. So we will do green for the left fan and we will do orange for the right fan. All it needs is a little bit. Now I've got plenty of overlap for these wires and they can both curl up and go right to the meter. I might end up getting that black, it's not electrical tape, but it's, it's flex wrap. I might pick up some of that and go around this all the way up to the thermostat on both as well as the lines coming off just trying to keep it all nice and bundled together you can see the JB Weld is done really well. It's very nice uh, and solid, which is what I wanted. So we need the stripe wire as the ground. Again, I could combine these, but in the event that I have to go and replace a fan, it doesn't make it very easy for swapping that stuff out. And then I believe these two positives come over to the normally open side of the relay. I 
I'll have to pick a different color for here. But. Something like that. So yeah, the way this works, you've got your battery ground and your battery positive. And then you've got your, your relay here. And this is designed, I believe, to have the 12 volt power supplying the thermostat, but then additional power going to the relay. Well, I just want to pass that 12 volt power through the relay. So that's why this green jumper is right here connecting this side of the relay to the 12 volts so it's going to pass that through so that's why we have our fan positive in k0 for the relay and our fan negative goes straight to the ground so as soon as the relay closes it will bridge these two and send power down these lines it took me a while to figure that one out i actually had to go back to the amazon listing Yeah, I think it'll look better once I get that mesh tape. Just wrap around these wires and then yeah, this will be your battery connection. And then your temperature probe plugs in. Right there. So yeah, I think if we just bundle all that together and bring that down, try and slide this temperature probe down between some of the cells or something. Just have to keep in mind that there's going to be a block that goes on top of that. But All right, so time to figure out where exactly these are going to get mounted. I like the idea of having this one in the center. And I have room to work with it behind, which is nice. I am going to have to put this one on. I was hoping I could get away with not doing it, but then I realized in some of my earlier tests that if I trip the relay, then the inverter is going to shut off because there's no power and I need to be able to turn it back on. And unless I really want to keep opening the case to turn the inverter back on, I'm going to have to have the on off switch for the inverter. So I'm kind of thinking just putting that off to the side here and then I'll color this black or something. At least the outside white edge. I don't know. Maybe I'll maybe I'll take a sharpie to the inside and see how it looks. But for the time being, we'll just get it mounted all white and just get it in place so that we can do our final cabling on the inside. But I know that I want this one right in the middle. Now there's a lip on the edge so I need to make sure that I take that into account when I measure and then it's got uh, two pinch wings that is actually what holds it in place so I also need to take those into account because they need to stick out a little bit wider but that'll that'll be what locks the display in place from the inside so hopefully I can do this right the first time and not uh, Screw it up too bad. I'm not going to do anything fancy other than eyeballing it. I probably should measure, but... So there's my, my width. But then again, I remember I have this, this little lip, so I need to make sure that I leave enough for that lip on both sides. And then I believe it's really, it's going to end up coming right down to here. That's roughly it. I don't know what you can actually see on camera. Probably just seeing more of my head again. I don't know. Well, let's let's cut that one out and see how it looks. Looks like I have a 
maybe an eighth of an inch that I can play around with this. Trusty oscillating tool. As always, we've got cleanup. Not nearly as bad cleanup as we had with the sawzall, though. All right, let's check our rough opening. Not quite big enough, so we have to go a little bit lower. Looks like I took out too much, of course. Now the fun part, I have to take out a sliver. This is why it's good to have a good utility knife. So the plastic is thick for this to bite into, so I need to thin the inside edge just a little bit. There we go. Doesn't want to come out, so that's good. So obviously, I did go too low on the bottom, which is a pain. But I think I can fill that with something black just to get it to kind of disappear a little bit. But all in all, that don't look too bad. I think this one's gonna be worse. I'm trying to get that one in there. Go old school and I could even put some roofing tar in there. There we go. That's black, right? It's it's cocky. <laughs> sure I've got some of that floating around the house somewhere. Do that around the gap here and then the gaps on the other two sides around the vents. Because clear just never ends up being clear, does it? Alright, let's try this other one. Actually fits in there pretty well. I think it's a little high on this corner. Oh, I know what it is. This this rigid plate bulges out a little bit. So it doesn't uh, want to sit flush up top, but that's fine. That's what the screws are for. They'll hold it in place. Now I just have to find the screws. You know, that's the problem with moving stuff from place to place to place. You lose the screws. I don't think these are them, but it might work. Yeah, I don't care for these screws, I'll have to find other ones, but 
you get the idea of what it's supposed to look like, where it's going to go. Let's see, that one will at least keep it from falling out. So yeah, kind of ugly, at least with the white, but when I get it uh, colored or painted or whatever, it'll blend in more. On the plus side, I shouldn't have to do any more drilling into the case anymore, or at least cutting into the case. Well, this is the on-off switch for my BMS. I was trying to disconnect it so that I could work on putting this inside the case and ended up ripping the green wire out of the pin. There we go. So I pulled the pin out and as I was trying to reseat the green wire and recrimp it, the pin acted like a spring and shot across the room and I have no clue where it is. So I'm pretty sure that this is the same connection for my BMS is over there. So in a pinch, I can pull one off of one of those BMSs and try and use it. But I did just order another one. It's five bucks, not, not bad. It's just gonna take a while to get here. But at least I should be able to at least, huh, hopefully, keep working on stuff. And I don't know if the green wire is just for the light on the button. It might be. I haven't gotten far enough to actually try and connect it back in to test it. But either way, I would. I just ended up ordering another one because I don't have the time to fart around with these tiny... I mean, these pins are so tiny. Like I said, it, it acted like a spring and it just shot across the room. I gotta slow down. And it was all due to the fact that when I was trying to pull it out of the BMS, this is a locking plug. So you gotta pinch it to pull out. Some of them are, some of them aren't. And so I was trying to wiggle it back and forth, back and forth, back and forth to pull it out. And pulled that green wire right out of that pin. <sighs> Gotta slow down. I think since I'm making, you know, mistakes like this, simple, stupid mistakes, it's time to call it an evening. <laughs> so before I start yanking any more wires out that are gonna break something else, I'm gonna let y'all go. So we, we made some, some progress tonight. We were able to get a lot of the components in place that we really had to before we could do our final wiring. Because these, these components and pieces are gonna kind of determine where and how the internal wiring from the battery to the inverter can actually run. So it looks like next time we're finally getting to the hard stuff. We got to figure out exactly how we can run these battery cables. Are we going to have any distribution blocks or anything in place to help route power to multiple locations? I don't know. So stay tuned for the next one where we can see if we can get closer to wrapping up this portable power station build. I've already got tasks out back that I need power for. And I really don't want to haul extension cords out that far. And I'm not hauling the generator out that far. So I'm really hoping that we can get this thing done quickly. <laughs> quick. I know, quick is relative. Uh, soon, so that I can get out back and uh, start trimming some stuff up. Because we got a lot of, of overhanging branches and stuff that are hanging over our trails that are too high to reach without either hauling out a ladder. And I've got an electric pole saw that I want to take out back and see if I can use that to trim up the path. So with that, y'all stay safe, stay cool, and we'll catch up with you later. <laughs>